Okay. Hi, YouTube. We are alive. This is our labor and delivery story. <laughs> We've got our newborn baby girl off in the corner, so we might be looking at her a little bit and she might be making some sounds, but we'll go ahead and give you the rundown. I did not want to be induced, but because our daughter was a week late and she was conceived by IVF, we were told that we needed to be induced. Um, they didn't want it to go a day after she was uh, due, but and I... I tried to induce before her yeah. due date. They tried to induce said. before her due date. I didn't even know that was yeah. a thing, but I fought hard on that because yeah. I didn't want an induction at all. And so we agreed that if she was a week past her due date, we would go in for an induction. And so she was a week past her due date, so we went in for our induction. Yep. So, so yeah, our appointment was for 6.30 at the hospital. We got there, checked in, and away we went. Uh, pretty much as soon as we got the paperwork out of the way, uh, and in our room, they gave her Cervidol. Yeah, so I didn't want Pitocin. I didn't want anything that strong, and they told me that the Cervidol was just like a pill that's attached by a string that they insert into your vagina. And so they did that. The first doctor that we had told us that she wasn't too hopeful that anything would change and that I would dilate because the Cervidol, in her experience, didn't make people dilate. Mm -hmm. um, but after how many hours? Uh, well, that was at 7.30 is when they first did the Cervidol. <laughs> and it was pretty much just a waiting game. And it made her have to go to the bathroom. Sure. So we kept her happened to go to the bathroom with your IV, because you got the IV drip at the same time, I guess. And then pretty much we waited, waiting, pain started to get worse. Uh, she dilated to four centimeters at some point throughout the night. Um, so I was pretty excited about that, because that meant that the Cervidol was progressing, and I didn't have to go on Pitocin, right. um, So I was because I was dilating. And then after five centimeters, um, things started to get really, really intense, like pain-wise. So. I did not want any kind of like pain medication. I wanted to do it au natural, but... Um, yeah, so they were saying it's looking good, looking good, and then um, around 7 a.m., that's when you made the call for the epidural. So I'd been in labor for how long? Like uh, Almost 12 hours. 12 hours yeah. at that point? Uh-huh. It, I was holding, I was squeezing his hand and I was just like, I looked at him and there came a point where I was just like, I don't, I don't think I can do this anymore without an epidural. And I was, I, I had to let go, <laughs> I had to let go of wanting to do it natural. Um, so they actually, they gave me anaglesics or I don't know what it's called, but some kind of like, uh, medication that's supposed to help with the pain, kind of like an intense ibuprofen um, if you didn't want an epidural. So it's like the step down from that. And even with that medication, it was so excruciating at five centimeters dilated that I, I went ahead and gave in and got the epidural. Yep. And it was like the best thing I've ever done in my life. So, so yeah, they escorted me out of the room. And about 20 minutes later, they asked me to come back. And she had the epidural and a catheter. And she was pretty much laid up on the bed and... The epidural was so relieving. Like, at that point, I could finally get some sleep because I hadn't slept in longer than 12 hours. Right. I mean, it had been the night before since I was able to sleep. And so I, I, with the epidural, I was able to finally get some rest for about two hours. And then I was, I was feeling more contractions, more contractions. The doctor came back in and said I was seven meters dilated. And that was around 1 p.m. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. so, seven and a half. <laughs> so at this point, I had been in labor for how many hours? Uh, well, so let's see, 12, uh, about 17, a little over 17. I'm bad at math, but a long time it felt like. And I finally was seven centimeters dilated. And I said everything's looking great. They're like, you're, progr you're progressing wonderfully like the fact that you're already up to seven and a half they were really excited about it and they said it's pretty much just a waiting game and we kept watching the monitors hoping the contractions would kind of get a little more steady a little more evened out because they're still kind of sporadic 
And I was worried about like having too much epidural pain medication because I was worried about being out of it and not really experiencing the birth of my child once it came time to push. But with the epidural, well, they so would... you kept on low for the yeah, first five so... or six hours. You never even pressed the button to increase it. You kept at the lowest setting. Yeah, I wanted to make wow. sure that I was only given enough medicine to like kind of taper off the pain, the hard edge of the pain, because I did not want to be totally doped up on whatever the epidural medication is. So I was very, um, uh, very like, I don't know, just, just sensitive about that um, and very aware, so. Yep, and all, while all this is going on, her legs are growing. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. So they give you so much fluid with the IV drip that my legs, turned into the size of tree trunks. So I couldn't eat or drink anything. And I just remember having my husband and my mother there rotating my legs so that I could get circulation going because they kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they would let me eat ice chips. Like they would let me suck on ice chips. So it was ice and I couldn't talk because I was in so much pain and then rotate my legs. Even, even though I was in so much pain in between contractions though, it was still 10 times better with the epidural. So I could still feel pain when I had the epidural, but it was, I didn't feel like I was, I was being shot <laughs> every time a contraction came up. Uh, whereas without the epidural, that's how it felt. And then, so yeah, so then we're getting in towards middle of the afternoon now, maybe three o'clock, four o'clock, and contractions aren't really getting any more steady. They're still I have plateaued. all over the place. They're not consistent. Every, and then they decided to manually Break your water. Um, so my water hadn't even broke at that point, and I'm still seven right. centimeters dilated. So they they use, need me at ten centimeters in order for me to start pushing. So they use their little hook or whatever it is, and I can't sure. feel anything no. down there because because of the epidural. I think it, it has some kind of a numbing agent in it. So every time they went inside of me to check to see how dilated I was, I could I could feel a little bit of pressure, yeah. but it wasn't that wasn't the the hard part. Yep. Once you have the numbing meds. So, so yeah, they broke the water and then just still a monitoring game and it was pretty much still at seven and a half. And then with each contraction, we were starting to see baby's heart rate drop. And with each big contraction, the heart rate would really drop. And there's a few times they kind of stayed in the room for a while to watch because the heart rate would not go right back up like it was supposed to. It would kind of take a while to get back up. So they started to get some cause for concern there, and that's when they put, I'm not even sure how, with the monitor. Oh, I forgot. I've, I've been on Pitocin now at this point, so because they wanted my contractions to come quicker, and they wanted me to be able to push the baby, so they put me on Pitocin. And once they put me on Pitocin, and I'm no longer on Cervidol, that's when her heart rate started to go down. Yes, that's She right. hated the Pitocin. Yeah. Just like I knew she would because her mother did not want Pitocin. And so that's when they hooked up the monitor to the baby's skull, kind of the tiny little corkscrew monitor into her scalp to monitor everything. And they still didn't really like how everything was looking. You weren't dilating anymore. So pretty much our doctor came in around, I think it was about six, eh, 5.30, 5.45 p.m., so it's almost been 24 hours, been, what, 22 hours at that point, and she pretty much gave the real speech where, like, you're not progressing, baby's heart is dropping quite drastically. I mean, she's like, if it was my friend or my sister, pretty much I would say we need to do a C-section or at least seriously consider it. I know you don't want to. Uh, I know that wasn't the plan, but... So far, nothing really has been stuck to the plan. Um, so we kind of... Basically everything I wanted, yeah. we had to change on the fly. Yeah. So I talked to my mom and my husband about it, and we agreed that an emergency cesarean was what was needed because my child's heart rate was dropping drastically. Yep. So fast forward, so after the paperwork. 22 hours of labor, yep. they wheel me in to do the emergency cesarean. Which is about an hour after they decided, like, you need a C-section, and then it was kind of like... So we had this thought that it was urgent, and then it was about an hour before we were even taken back there, and um, I kind of got 
put my scrubs, you were prepped and... And did. I can see and hear everything that's going on. Well, so you were taken away and I don't even know where you went. I was put in a holding room. They put up a curtain above yep. me um, so I could... I'm still conscious. They give me... They, they numbed my stomach area, but I'm still conscious and I can... I can see uh, what's going on around me, and but I can't see behind the curtain. And that's when they came and got me, and they said, all right, we're ready, because by then it was going to be pretty much I walk in, and the ex expectation was pull baby out, we have that magical moment, and then that's supposed to be it. Uh, they told her mom to just wait, you know, this usually only takes 45 minutes to an hour, then we'll be in recovery, and you'll be able to see us and the baby soon. So her mom is sitting out there waiting. And so yeah, we went in at 6.40. She was finally taken into the C-section room. I was brought in about 20 minutes after that. And then, I, I don't know what happened. I mean, craziness ensued, I guess. Um, pretty much people, when I got in there, they were just about to pull her out and they pulled the baby out and everything's going great. And then I hear, you know, we need more, we need more fluids. And the uh, anesthesiologist was, needed to monitor more closely because the doctor didn't like how it was responding so they kind of apparently i'm losing tons of blood i can see on the curtain blood splashing right. everywhere i am feeling weaker and weaker and weaker the anesthesiologist said how you doing and i was like i've been better and at that point i thought i was knocking on death's door and then because i had no energy even to respond right. because I was losing so much blood and getting so, so weak, baby. And they had me pulled off to the side with baby, kind of like, oh, helping the measure and do all that. And I don't know if that was to help distract because then I just saw there was a few other doctors that just came like running in and like everyone's yelling like we need more blood ordered. And I see them filling giant syringes and finding out they're pumping milk into her bladder, which was hooked to a catheter. So they're pumping milk into her because they thought, I heard them say they thought, <laughs> they thought that her uh, bladder might have been nicked in the procedure. So they wanted to make sure that there was no hole in the bladder. So they're pumping her with milk. I mean, the blood is, I mean, not to be graphic, but blood is now pretty much covering the floor and the doctors and scrubs and I just hear them say, you know, how many more minutes till this blood, uh, till the blood gets here? And they say, we need to do another IV in your other hand and you're awake enough to say like, I don't want it, I don't want it. And that's when our doctor who's very calm, very even keel, she kind of looked over the curtain <laughs> at us and she's like, I know you don't want it. I know you don't like needles. But she's just like, you don't have a, she's like, you don't have a choice. You have to listen to us. And it was like, back to work. Um, so throughout the, yeah. the whole debauched cesarean, I learned that I have a lot of scarring inside of my uterus and that I have endometriosis. So I've never have had abdom abdominal surgery before, but that's the only way that you can confirm endometriosis. So I've always suspected that that was my reason for infertility, but it's never been confirmed. So through having my first child, it was confirmed that I do indeed have endometriosis and a lot of scarring inside of my uterus. So I believe that was that was they believe the bleeding that they couldn't get to stop was the scar tissue. It just they could not get it to clot or stop. Um, but so yeah, it was supposed to be about a forty-five minute to an hour procedure. They said uh, we were in there for over two hours. Um, by the time they finally got the bleeding to stop and closed back up, and then they took us to a side uh, recovery room where we spent another hour and a half to two hours. Um, mind you, at this point, her mother is still sitting out there, I'm sure freaking out by this point because it was, we were supposed to be back to her in an hour and it's now been almost four hours and no one's really filling her in. No one was giving us too much information at that point. Um, so we stayed there, they kept checking her signs and they're trying to put baby on mom as much as possible. I'm completely out of yeah. it. This is exactly why I didn't want a cesarean because I knew I wasn't going to be my complete 
energetic self after giving birth and especially after cesarean. <laughs> So, um, I, I really wasn't able to bond with my daughter like I wanted to, I would say, until weeks after giving birth. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video because she's getting kind of fussy and talkative. Um, we are very, very blessed with our baby girl and our growing family. I'm happy to be alive, even though... Oh, oh good. Good. Yeah. Even though the um, birthing experience was a lot different than I wanted or expected, um, recovery now three months later I can say is is going well and um, yeah we're very thankful. So thanks for watching this long video of our labor and delivery story and we will see you in the next one. Bye.